This block diagram represents an active suspension system that is supposed to control the position of a wheel given the road conditions T of S. We are looking at a desire, maintaining a certain position for the wheel, provided that we know the bumps in the road that are measured using a sensor, and that measurement is T of S. We want to tune this control system so that the position of the wheel here is always zero. So if, even if there is a bump, the position here is always constant, which means that the suspension system is working properly. The question is find the gain k1 that will result in y equals to zero regardless of what is applied at t of s. If you want y to go to zero, we have to set r to zero. Notice that this is a feedback system and this is a physical measurement. We cannot set y physically to zero because we don't have control over that. That is the whole point of this control system is to develop something that will ensure that this goes to zero. To make this go to zero, then we set R of S to zero. The desired position of the wheel is zero for any input measured from the road, T of S. Now to find K1, we need to find the transfer function of this system involving all three variables. We can start by identifying the signals at each point in this circuit. For instance, here we have y and here we have r. So the signal right here is r of s minus y of s. The signal here is t of s. So the signal after this gain is then t of s times k1. Before the sum, we have this signal, and we are injecting k, uh, t, uh, ts times k1, subtracting that, and that gives the signal right here. So the signal there is r of s minus y of s minus t of s k1. This is the signal right before this gain. So the signal after the gain is the whole thing multiplied by K2. So if you now multiply this by K2, we have the signal here. The signal there minus T of S, which is the signal that is being injected here to the negative sign, is the signal at this point of the circuit. The signal here times g now gives the, the transfer function the relation to y. So if here, at this point, we have this expression, passing that through g is equivalent to multiplying everything by g of s. And that is equal to the signal here, which is y of s. The signal at this point past the block. Now let's multiply this out. What do you have? We have R. I'm going to omit the S's for now. Everything is in the frequency domain. S K2 G minus Y K2 G minus T K1 K2 G times G and minus T times g equals to y. Now, because we want y to go to zero, we have to set r to zero. So this entire term here is zero. Now let's keep all t's on this side and send y's to the other side of the equation. We get t k1 k2 g minus t g equals to y plus y k2 times g. We can now factor tg on this side of the equation that gives t times g k1 plus times k2 minus one equals to y one plus k2g. I believe I made a mistake, I forgot this negative sign here, so let's add it 
right there. Now that you have this expression, the objective is to, set, is to have y go to 0. So we cannot set this whole term to 0. But again, this does not mean that we can set y to 0. What you are trying to do here is to find appropriate values of k1 and k2 so that the input goes to 0, the output goes to 0, when the input is 0. So if you desire the input is 0, for the values that are going to find, y goes to 0. That is not equivalent to setting y to 0. So from here we get, if this side is 0, 0 divided by tg is 0. So negative k1, k2 minus 1 equals to 0. Isolating for k1 gives k1 equals to 1, negative 1 over k2. So if you now tune the control system properly and set k1 to negative 1 over k2, when the desired input is set to 0, that guarantees that y, the output, also goes to 0. 